Japan, Korea, Taiwan, and Singapore are letting in a lot more foreign workers now to help solve their current labor shortage issue. Is it about time? And how will it all go? Let's talk about it. But they got homogeny. They savor. But what about the labor? Will they ever give them papers? Let's run the clip. This would have been a rare sight just 10 years ago. Foreigners working on a Japanese construction site. One of them, Wang, is Chinese. Initially, a friend told me that life would be easy here and that I could have a better salary. And South Korea will be bringing in some 110,000 migrant workers this year to work at its farms and factories. These sectors are facing a labor shortage as younger South Koreans deem those jobs dirty and dangerous. The country's treatment of migrant workers is now under closer scrutiny. CNA's Lim Young Suk tells us more. Boom! Listen, man, you got a labor shortage. A lot of people aren't having kids in these countries, so you need to import workers. However, Andrew, there's a lot of questions surrounding what is the life of these workers like because they can only stay in the country as long as their employers allow them to. Right, so we're going to talk about kind of why it's such a big deal for countries like Japan and Korea to let in foreign workers because it's not something they always did on this amount. There was always some foreign workers, but not in the amount that they are about to have because they have a major labor shortage, especially for farming and, you know, blue collar jobs. So we're going to talk about it. Please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. And check out Smile Last Sauce on Amazon.com right now. I'll tell you this, man. When we went to Tokyo, Andrew, most of the workers, uh, not all, but like at 7-Eleven were from Nepal. Mm. And I remember like we just recently went to a Yakiniku restaurant and I looked at the kitchen and the kitchen was a lot of like, you know, I, I didn't know they looked like part Asian, part like Indian. And then I remember like, they were just like, Hajime Maste! you know, because they had spent time in Japan. So not only are there, uh, this is like becoming so much of a thing that I'm meeting people in New York that used to live in Japan from Nepal. Right. So now, like, as you guys know, there's different situations for different migrant workers. Some are only brought over on special visas that only they can only stay so as long as their company is. There are certain other ones that are on a different level. Visa. One year, two year, three year. Right, right, right. And then obviously some do, I think, stay and become citizens. But is there really a path for them? Uh, is Japan going to allow it and other stuff like this? So let's talk about it, David. Why, why is it a big deal for Japan, Korea, Singapore, and Taiwan to be doing this? Well, here's the point. These are first world economies, Japan, Korea, Singapore, Taiwan. They need a lot of immigration due to the economy. Andrew, this is happening in all first world economies globally. Right, and it's not just because these countries aren't having enough kids. It's true that the birth rates in these countries are is not very high or if not negative, but it's just a shortage also because more people are leaning into the white collar educated jobs, which also gives them oftentimes opportunities to leave those countries and immigrate to the West to get educated and possibly stay and work there. Or, or whatever country of their choice, right? Whatever country they are going to, obviously them getting educated actually gives them more options on an international scale, right? Different banking jobs, finance jobs, science jobs, engineering Re Remote jobs. work. Remote work, right? Uh, whatever. So obviously a lot of they need labor for like the farming jobs and like the construction jobs. And that's what you're starting to see more of. For example, in this article, Andrew, a lot of the uh, workers in Japan at this confectionery factory that makes like traditional candies are Vietnamese. Mm, interesting. Right, right, right. Uh, point number two, Andrew, there's a lot of questions of cultural fit of potentially different manners or just like fitting into the culture. Right. So you're bringing in a lot of people from a vastly different society, uh, usually a you know, third world to the first world. It could be the second world to the first world as well. It just depends on different levels. And basically, are these people going to fit in with the cultural flow? Right. And, and as you can see, like uh, from the clip, it's like there are Chinese workers going to Japan. So it's not only from Nepal and other countries like that. It could even be from China. Like Chinese workers, our Uber construction drivers in, workers. Our Uber drivers in Tokyo were Chinese. Yeah, that's true, right? Um, I don't know what visas they were on, but you know they were driving Uber. So I guess like, yeah, I mean, this is a question for any time. Um, like, how do you get a worker who is from a different country and maybe is not a master at that at the new language yet to come over there, work efficiently for some years and possibly stay there longer or go back? Like, how do you integrate them? Like, right, quickly, right, right. right? And if they are going to go back, ultimately, which I think is ultimately like, for example, Andrew's Japan's hope. 
like, are they at least treated fairly enough while they're there that the whole interaction is just like kosher on both sides? Yeah, no. Like, I, everybody's happy with what they got out of it. I actually think that Japan and Korea will not want people to stay and become Japanese and Korean unless they like buy into a, like a 12 out of 10 level. But as long as they're paid well enough while they're there to send the money back, then it's just a positive experience for everybody, right? Right. I mean, I would say, obviously, I've heard bad stories. Obviously, there's uh, some stories of people in that advanced country or treating the migrant workers, you know, badly and stuff. There are some cases going around, but ultimately, I mean, ideally, the situation is like, yeah, they could, Japan, they obviously are an island, so, like, they know everybody that's coming over. You know, it's not necessary. it's not as easy to sneak sneak into japan as it is would be like america right 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 there's no borders um point number three east asia has always been uh relatively ethnically homogenous more so than the himalayas or southeast asia or central asia so it's like i guess them dealing with like different looking people is newer yeah but i guess like is it different like in hong kong there was always for some time now like filipino or indonesian like home help like housekeepers and and nannies and stuff like that so is it kind of a, a similar situation or is it like kind of different? I, I think it's a little bit different when you have somebody in your house like cooking and cleaning versus like literally like singapore is even letting in mass immigration at a mid-level not just low level. I think in Japan and Korea, they're still keeping it relatively low. In Singapore, they're starting to move to like even mid-tier jobs because the whole society wants high-tier jobs. Right. Who do you think is going to be more strict, Singapore or Japan? Because both countries are very strict in what they expect of people who come to these countries and want to work, right? Yeah, like yeah. Singapore is going to be like, hey, you got to learn English. You have to learn English. Uh, and then Japan's going to be like... You have to speak Japanese. All right, all right, here's the thing about Singapore. They got a lot of really, really strict laws, but they're a little bit more loose on like, oh, you like look different. You like dress different. It is more diverse. They're, yeah, like 100%. they're cool with it as long as you follow a very strict set of laws. In Japan, not only do they have strict laws, they have strict social norms that it's true that some people can be very offended by if you violate the social norms. Right, I almost feel like Singapore's culture is really, it's not really ethnically based, even though it's probably 60, 70% Chinese, but- it's actually fairly diverse, and really, I feel like the Singaporean culture is really just, like, how strict it is. Like, do not litter. I definitely don't sell drugs. Uh, learn English. Be respectful. Don't talk bad on each other's races. Yeah, yeah. you can't publicly talk bad about other races and be racist, yes. Um, point number four, what role will technology and strictness play? That kind of comes back to it. Can... Countries that have been one monoculture be like Singapore, which Singapore is like a really attractive place for a lot of people because they have the law and order, but they have the diversity on the cultural side. Mm, that's but, why but, food in yeah. Singapore is so good. Yeah. And then point number five, Andrew, the work culture in East Asia can be extremely strict and possibly more intense than the regions where uh, the people are coming from. Oh. So can they adapt? Like, you know what I mean? They're just like working here 80 hours a week is normal. That is our baseline expectation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting. I mean, I think the whole management issue uh, is, it's. I mean, it's going to be a big thing and people are going to have to figure it out. And, uh, you know, when you're a country that needs workers, uh, yeah, you're going to have to figure things out, so. Right, right, right. All right, so let's just get into some of the comments. Andrew, do you think it is people not wanting to marry and have kids because everybody's enjoying a first world lifestyle? Is that the crux of this? That late, late stage capitalism, first world countries, everybody's got access to all like, you know, nice things and materialized. People care about fashion. You know how caring about fashion is like something that's more middle class and up. You know what I mean? Like, is that just the whole reason? No, no. I, I mean, I think it's a lot of like the level of work that people are really trying to do. Like- yeah, again, I don't imagine that many second, like, a young generation of Japanese people wanting to do construction work, right? Because they see the opportunities of media. Obviously, AI, tech is blowing up, you know, uh, no longer do they want to work in a factory. Everybody's jobs are moving up in that country. You want to work on automobiles. You want to work at least a service industry, at least serve in a cool restaurant, right? That's everybody's dream. So, yeah, I do think things are changing, and... Uh, it's going to be interesting. I mean, again, I feel for these countries that are going to have a, are they going to have a labor shortage? Is, is Nepal going to have a labor shortage because so many Nepalese are leaving to go to other countries to work? Right. Yeah. That's a good question. I guess it would depend on like what factories or like manufacturing really exists 
within that right, right. locality. I know, for example, like China wants to maintain their blue collar workers because they got factories that they need to work at. But probably, to be honest, blue collar work probably pays better in Japan. Just like, you know what I mean? Like blue collar work in Latin America pays way less than being a blue collar worker in America. Right. Yeah, it's a similar situation. Um, somebody said, I like how Japan is not diverse. Is that so wrong? And then is that such an evil statement in 2024? Mm. That's an interesting point. It's an interesting point because obviously the Western world has like, it's like people don't really understand the wet the immigration to the West is not, in my opinion, just a moralistic thing. It's because the West has its hands all over the world. Mm. Whereas Japan doesn't really do that. I mean, obviously post World War II. So that's why they don't have as much. Right. You know what I mean? Like if you own like diamond mines, in like all across Africa, you're going to have African immigration. But but is it like, is it about time that Japan gets a little more diverse? And it's not just diversity for diversity reasons. Again, it's like Japan almost needs to get more diverse for literally the labor situation. Right. Uh, that's a good question. That's the internal debate within Japan right now. And, and I think, can they adapt? Obviously, it's better if they could just get highly educated, highly motivated, you know, uh, uh, law-abiding citizens, diversity, that's the way the world is headed. You and can't also, fight the sands of time. Are we going to assume that every migrant who migrant worker who goes to Japan is going to love Japan, wants to be Japanese? I don't think no, we but should they want that. The, they want the ones they do, though. They want the work, but how many of them are really going to buy in? Like, Or are you just going to take what you can get, Japan? Yeah, I think it's a good question. I mean, realistically... I don't know. Yeah, women may buy in more than guys. I don't know. Who knows? I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a gender theory, I mean, or whatever. Like... Um, Somebody said, why are East Asians so obsessed with white collar mobility? Is it the Confucianism and the historical bureaucracy and civil service exams? Because that is what is causing all this, all this, you know, to your point about like constantly wanting, like, I got a, I got an office job. Now I want like a poly, you know what I mean? Like the, the jobs up the supply chain right, or whatever right, right. The, the value chain. Um, somebody was saying, please don't end up like Canada. Obviously there's a big beef in Canada right now. And Canada does not have a lot of, uh, does not have a border with Latin America. So they needed to fill in the labor shortage. They shipped, uh, they got a lot of immigrant us uh, from India. Mm -hmm. But then right now there's a huge like cultural war about that in Canada. Right. Right. So basically people are saying like, you know, at the end of the road, most countries seem to end up with the immigration strategy, but it seems like they handle the immigration all differently. Mm. Well, I guess the big question is here, how will Japan handle the immigration situation? Are they going to handle it? Is the Japanese government and the Japanese people going to handle it the same way? Are they going to open up to these new migrant workers, like with open arms, you know? I, but again, migrant workers have been in Japan for a while. Like we said, like seven, eight years ago when we went to Japan, like there was already foreign workers. There's foreign workers in every country I've ever been to. Especially know. the big cities. Yeah, especially the big cities, there are foreign workers, you know, who will take that job. So it's just kind of this, it, the amount is new. You know what's really interesting? And it's like so tough because everybody's going to come up with this example, that example. There's no one answer, but it's almost like does the incoming immigrant need to treat the current culture of where they're landing like a religion. You know how in the old days, people used to conquer each other and like make people either convert to, or at least in the West, because I think the West is more religious, but like convert to each other's religion. Do they need to treat the native culture like a religion that they're buying their way into? Mm. Or as long as they handle their job, they deliver what they need to the shareholders of the company that is providing them the visa. Is that the end of the transaction? Questions. Yeah. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. I think for me, my final takeaway is AI. AI in America, it's not going to work because people like have individual freedoms, right? Like as long as you can maintain the law and order in the society, like Singapore does, culture can shift. Right. Because the ancient culture has been documented. But yeah, and like maybe the government, should, if they're really so worried about diffusion or whatever, like document it more. But yeah. Why not have more people around? It's really about obeying the law and keeping like people feel safe. Yeah. And again, like this is not like the immigration issue in America where there's like a lot of people crossing the border, whether it's families, men and women, sometimes it's all guys or whoever it is like, and how it's like kind of messy in America. It's, it's, you know, when Japan gets it, everybody's going to be documented. Usually. Right. I mean, I know like there's cases of undocumented workers, but of course, because, you know, companies, they, they want cheap labor and every country's, 
Every country has companies that are going to do that. Every you know, business owner is going to take yeah, an undocumented ch- worker for cheaper, bro, because they yes. worried about their bottom line. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, anyways, uh, yeah, maybe Japan is super strict and only wants the workers that are all fully documented and really want to come, but then that's also going to limit the amount of people they can take. So anyways, guys, uh, interesting things happening in Asia right now. Uh, not, but also similarly in a weird, different dynamic thing is happening in America. But, but so, because the society is different, it may change the implementation and the details. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.